Hello. My name is Joy Bishara, and I am from Nigeria. On April 14, 2014, the Boko Haram terrorists came into my town, my hometown, Chibok, at night while everyone was at sleep. They were shooting guns while coming to our town. I was sleeping and haven't heard of it. My friend waked me up and said, Joy, can't you hear what is going on? I said, no, and I went back to sleep. She said, get up, we cannot go to sleep. Something is wrong, the Boko Haram people are here. And I, she said, listen. And I listened to the voices and I can hear them shouting and shooting guns outside. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, the Boko Haram terrorists are here. And we were all freaked out. We got up and we were praying for our families because I didn't grow up there even though I was born there. So I just hear like stories that whenever they visit families, they kill like the men and then kidnap the women or kill the men and then leave. So I was praying. We were all praying for our families to get to a safe place because they were all around the town. And while we were deciding on what to do, we were all like, some of us said we should just run out, and some of us said we should climb the walls and get out. But some of us said we are not allowed to leave the school, so we should just stay. We were still deciding on what to do, and a man just came in. We, we all were scared, so we started to kind of run, and he said, no, you shouldn't run. I'm just here to protect all of you, so... There is nothing wrong. I'm here to protect you from what is going on outside. We trusted him because the soldiers outside our gates used to come in whenever we scream or are scared, and then they make sure we go to bed. They take care of us before they go away. So we trusted him. We thought he was one of them. And he said we should all come in a circle. All of us were in a circle, and then he said, okay. Then a lot of them started coming into our school, into the dorm where we were all sleeping. They all came in because we were all in a circle and we have no chance to run. So when they started coming in a lot, that's when I realized, oh, no, these are not the soldiers. Not all of them have uniforms, so they're not the soldiers. And it was too late to run because they were all around us with guns and bombs, so we cannot run. And so... They said that they're here, they're the Boko Haram people we have been hearing about, and they're the ones who kill, who burn churches. So they just, they're just telling us what they do, and they said, if we do not cooperate, same thing is going to happen to us. And we were all scared, crying. Some of us are, like, praying, and they said, we have to tell them where they are engine of making block is like engine making machine so uh, block making machine that was what they asked us but we don't know where it is so we told them we do not know they thought we were lying and they asked two girls to get, stand up among us to so they thought the two girls will tell them the truth because we were in a group they thought we were lying to them, but the two girls, they repeat what we said. They said they didn't know where it is, and no one knows. So they're like, okay, if the government sent things to the school, then where does it go? And all we know was the food for the girls, which is the kitchen, the kitchen store. And two girls took them there. They uh, opened the store and started getting the foods out to take with them. They're putting it in their own trucks, and when some of them are still with us in the dorms, and they asked us to start coming to follow them. We were coming out with them, and the schools were burning. We were all on fire, and the fires were, like, almost touching us. So we were, like, we were helping each other pass through it. And when we went to the get, they asked us to sit down. And we all sat down. They burned the schools. We couldn't see any teachers because they have, like, they do not have mercy. They don't, they don't have mercy on anyone. So all the teachers ran away. There is no teachers in the school. And the gate man wasn't there either. And the soldiers that were outside the gate were not there too. So they have strong weapons that even the soldiers doesn't. So they cannot stand to fight them. They all ran away as well. So, And while we were sitting in front of the gate, 
they were burning the school. The offices, they burned every single building in the school. And then they came to us. And one of the leaders said they should go and get trucks. And my own thought was like, okay, since they don't kill women, then they're going to let us go if they're done doing what they're doing. So, and then they asked us to start going out. We all walked out, and they're showing our direction for us to go to. And I'm like, okay, are, we, are they not letting us go? In my heart, I was like, okay, they're taking us away since they're pointing a direction for us to follow. And all of us went with them. They asked us to sit under a tree, and we all, some of them said we should kneel down, some of them said, no, it's okay, we should just sit down. And the rest went and brought like three trucks, huge trucks that we all, like they said, we should say our last prayer, they're going to kill us all. So some of us are crying, we were praying, and I have my friend beside me, which we don't, who wakes me up, we are together all that while, and she's like, let's just pray that they change their mind, because I do not want to die, I want to go continue my studying. And in that hostel, in our dorms, they told us not, never, never to go to school again, and because they said never to go to school again, my own thought was, okay, they're going to let us go then still, since they don't want us to go back to school, but it wasn't like that, they were taking us away. We helped each other in order to climb the truck. There was a small size car, women car that we have to climb in order to enter the truck because it was really tall and huge. So we helped each other. They said, if you want to die, you go to the left. And if you want to leave, you go into the truck. So no one wants to die. Everyone was trying to go into the truck. And all of us climbed the trucks. The truck started moving. And while I was in that car, I was like, is this the end of all my struggling, like studying in school, dreaming of becoming a doctor, is this where it is going to end? My hopes were like, I gave up. I'm like, okay, if this is what God wants, then it's okay. But then at the end, in that same truck, I was like, I prayed and asked God to please save me and to please let me see my families again. I do not want to go with those people. And to my surprise, something got into me and said, you should jump out. I'm like, I looked down at the truck was still moving. I looked down and it was, the truck is, when you look down, it's scary because the trucks move and the truck is still tall. So I'm like, no way, I'm not going to make it. So at the end, I said, okay, it doesn't matter if I'm going to make it or not. I'm going to jump up. If I die here, it's better for my family to find my cops and then go with those people and know what, and then know what they're going to do with me. So I'm like, I'm going to jump out no matter what. So I convinced my friend because she wasn't going to do it. She knows if they see her, they're going to shoot us. So she's like, they're going to kill us. I'm not going to risk it. I'm like, it's okay, let's do it. It's fine, we better die than go with them. So she's like, okay, sure. And we jumped out, but we ran. When I jumped out, I fell with my stomach. So I got up and started running to the bush when she saw that, okay, I was okay. So she jumped out as well. And then, but we ran through different directions. We then got home together. While I was running in the bush, I met two of my classmates who also jumped out. I screamed because I thought they were the Boko Haram people who came to get me back. So we started, we continued running together. From there, while we were running for hours and hours, we didn't sleep, and a motorcycle man was passing by, and we asked him to please take us home. He said he's not going to take us home without knowing who we are. So we said, okay, we didn't trust from that time on. We didn't trust anyone. We didn't want to tell him who we are because we are scared. We didn't trust him, so I'm like, no, we shouldn't tell him who we are. Some of us said we have to tell him in order for him to help us. We need help. We cannot continue running like this. Our feet are all bloody because the bush was a thorny bush. So it scratched our skin and everything, and they're like, we have to get help. So we gave up at the end. We told him who we are, and he's like, yeah, sure, why not? So he took us back to Chibok, and while we went back to Chibok, 
parents from the schools went back, went to the school and look, there are no students and everyone is crying, where are the students? When they saw us, they gathered around, where are the rest of the girls? We are like, we jumped out of the truck, we don't know, some of them jump out as well, so I don't know if your kids are in it, if your daughter is in it, but we don't know, so they might get back, so be patient and we just comfort them, we are, everyone is crying. While I went home, my mom was as well crying like I am dead. So my neighbors were there for her, comforting her and everything. And two congresswomen from the United States, Congress Wilson and Joyce, they went to Nigeria to hear the story from us because they have been hearing like a little bit of the story. They don't know the complete story. So they went to Nigeria to hear from the students who escaped. And that was how she looks for scholarship here for us to continue our studies. And I didn't want it to continue studying because of what they said at that time. But when my, I was accepted in Grundy, Virginia, I'm like, okay, I want to become a doctor, save lives, then if I do not go to school, that is not going to be possible, so I have to go to school. I'm thinking of making that decision while I'm still thinking that the voice that said, do not go to school or else wherever you go, do not think you're safe. We are going to get you. So that voice is still there and I'm still deciding. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to go to school no matter what. So I'm not giving up my dreams. I'm going. And that was how I made the decision of coming here to continue, in my, to continue my study. <sighs> I will, my own prayers and hope is like for stu schools to be protected and for students not to go through what I went through because it wasn't a good experience and no student will want to go. To, I will never want to repeat that horrible experience. So I do not want any student to go through that as same experience. And the way that will happen is if schools are protected. So my own advice is the government need to protect schools for students to go and study their careers and go out and just change the world, be involved. Without education, then we'll not even all be here. Like, everyone has a good position because of an education. So why preventing other ch children of their own right? Like, it's the right of every child to go to school. That's what I believe. So. If schools are protected, if the government protects its people and the, the students are being protected and feel safe to study, then they will study their career and go out and be. If the schools are not protected, then many generations will lose, will not be educated, which will not be good because no one will get a good position and no one will like be a leader because of education. Some of us got to be presidents, ambassadors, chairmen, and we just have good positions. Then why is it that we cannot protect other students to study? Another day we will not all be here. Then the young generations need to be in that same position in order to make the nations, to make the countries move on. So if we are not protected to study in a safe place, and then we are being attacked, killed, and by people who do not believe in study in education, then all that dreams and hope and be, the dreams and hope of children studying and becoming something in the future to help the nations, then it will not be possible. So I advise that schools should be protected. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>